today I want to talk to you about the cardiac code and how fasting literally reprograms your heart. You see, when you fast or restrict carbohydrates, your body generates ketones. These aren't just molecular fuel. They reprogram the body at the deepest level. And while research has generally placed a heavy emphasis on the effects of ketones on brain metabolism, that was actually my PhD, ketones also metabolically reprogram muscles and your heart as well. So here's my promise to you. After watching this video, you're never going to look at fasting or ketogenic diets the same way again. Because these insights, they cut to the literal heart of metabolism. So let's get right into the central study I want to discuss, which was published in one of my favorite journals, Cell Metabolism. The researchers behind this study set out to ask the question, what happens to the metabolism during intermittent fasting? Now, because this was a deep mechanistic study that required organ harvesting, they did need to use animals, in particular mice, and subjected the little squeakers to an 18-6 fasting protocol, meaning 18 hours per day of fasting with a 6-hour feeding window. We'll get into further details of the protocol later because they're quite important and I think relevant to you. Anyway, as expected, the fasting resulted in reduced overall food intake and weight loss. However, interestingly, lean mass was preserved, leading to much improved body composition in the fasted mice relative to control mice. Cute little Arnold Schwartzen squeakers. Anyway, Furthermore, when the researchers then tested the metabolic resilience of the fasted adapted mice versus control mice with an acute fasting challenge, there was something else interesting that happened. The fasted trained mice preserved more lean mass and lost more fat mass than control mice when fasting challenged. This is kind of sensible, and in a nutshell, it's a functional marker of whole body metabolic adaptation. But we haven't even gotten to the good stuff yet. Metabolically speaking, what we really want to know, what we really want to pinpoint, is the key molecular switch that enables skeletal muscles in the heart to reprogram during fasting to burn more fat, preserve lean mass, and maintain exercise performance. To answer these questions, the researchers harvested skeletal muscle and heart muscle tissue from the mice and examined their metabolic profiles. One enzyme drew particular interest, one called BDH1. This is the enzyme that helps break down and generate ketone bodies, in particular beta-hydroxybutyrate. BDH1 was particularly enriched in red muscle tissue, meaning tissue that's rich in mitochondria and particularly good at oxidative metabolism, so generating energy through more efficient oxidative phosphorylation processes in mitochondria, as compared to less efficient glycolysis in white muscle tissue. Consider the red muscle tissue, the red mitochondria-rich muscle fibers, your endurance muscle fibers. This includes, of course, the muscle that works from the day you're born, actually before you're born, until the day you die, your heart. But here's where things took an unexpected turn. You might not be surprised by this adaptation and think BDH1 should go up because, of course, you'll want to burn more ketones as fuel, right? That's true. However, what the researchers found was that BDH1 didn't just impact ketone metabolism. It was essential for improving the metabolism of long-chain fatty acids as well. Now, let me try to explain why this is so odd. Generally, enzymes serve specific functions like simple tools. A spoon is good for eating soup, and a knife is good for cutting solid food. So if you saw someone grab a spoon, in this case BDH1, and effectively slice through a watermelon like they were playing real-life Fruit Ninja, you'd be understandably awestruck. Metabolically, that's what's happening here. BDH1 is enhancing fatty acid oxidation, in addition to its roles in ketone metabolism. And when the researchers knocked out the BDH1 enzyme, there was what they called fatty acid oxidation bottlenecking, basically an accumulation of those metabolic watermelons clogging up the works. And this was associated with reduced exercise tolerance. I know that's a lot of words, it's a lot of jargon, so let's pause now and summarize what we've learned. Intermittent fasting improved body composition and led to metabolic adaptations that preserved exercise performance and enhanced metabolic resilience. 
This effect was largely dependent on the ketone processing enzyme BDH1, which is enriched in red muscle tissue, including the heart. Does that make sense? And remember, BDH1 serves this additional function of enhancing the efficiency of fatty acid processing. Now, before I get on to how to apply this science strategically in your own life, I do just want to mention the researchers did additional experiments to show impressively that this BDH1 molecular switch also improved mitochondrial efficiency and actually supported muscle growth. It gets a bit technical, but if you really are hungry, for these details, you can, as always, get more information and graphical walkthroughs at staycuriousmetabolism.com. See the link below. Anyway, now I want to get on to protocols to apply this amazing science in your real life. The first is what I'm going to call four days on and three days off. I've thus far failed to mention that in this study, the researchers didn't subject the mice to an 18-6 fasting protocol every single day, but rather four days per week of 18-6, with three days of non-fasting recovery. The researchers actually chose this approach specifically because they felt it would enhance the human relevance of the findings, since intermittent fasting four days per week permits a lifestyle and social buffer of sorts. So, if we assume these physiologic mechanisms described in this study generalize to humans, and given that humans, we, are the most ketogenic animals, I think it's a fair assumption. A starter protocol you can consider for yourself is using this 18-6 intermittent fasting protocol four days per week. So that could look like eating between noon and 6 p.m., four days per week, with two to three days of longer 10 to 12 hour eating windows. Now, I said two to three days because some people like to work in a weekly or bi-weekly 24 to 36 hour fast as an extra metabolic challenge. This is not a must, but some people like it. Secondly, let's talk strategic carbs. Specifically, you can leverage the adaptations described in this study in the context of carbohydrate cycling. We get into some more details in this video, but it's effectively metabolic double dipping. The objective is to promote ketosis during fasting or ketogenic diet periods to enhance your ability to burn body fat, preserve muscle mass, and maintain energy levels during a fast while using targeted carbohydrates prior to or following high intensity workout bouts, which can improve performance in many people. Speaking from experience, after my adaptation to a ketogenic diet, my endurance performance recovered and eventually so did my high intensity performance. But, but against the backdrop of enhanced fat burning capacity, when keto adapted, even a modest, a measly bolus of carbs, like 25 grams before a high intensity workout, now provides a particularly potent stimulus when I'm planning for very intense exercise. Additionally, or alternatively, after intense exercise, or just really exercise in general, muscle expresses higher levels of the glucose receptor, GLUT4, on their surfaces. This creates an insulin-independent sink for sugar. This preferentially replenishes muscle glycogen while having a relatively lesser impact on liver glycogen stores, so you're partitioning your sugar stores. And this bias towards more muscle glycogen and less liver glycogen is relevant because muscles can't release glucose into the blood. They're metabolically selfish and keep it to themselves. On the other hand, the liver can dump sugar into the blood, and higher liver glycogen stores inhibit ketosis. So long story short, you can use targeted carbs post-exercise to increase your muscle glycogen to liver glycogen ratio potentially optimizing high-intensity exercise performance while maintaining ketosis. At least that's the idea. So now, hopefully I haven't lost you, let's wrap up. Here's the thought I want to leave you with today. The next time you think about fasting or cutting back on the carbs and going keto, think about molecular choreography. Think about how your body, when given the right cues, doesn't just burn more fat, it retools itself from the inside out. Ketone bodies reprogramming not only your brain, but your muscles and your heart. And at the heart of that transformation is this BDH1 enzyme, the enzyme that doesn't just help 
processes like ketosis, but unlocks a suite of powerful adaptations, improved fat oxidation, muscle preservation, cardiac efficiency, and overall metabolic resilience. So train smart, eat strategically, and don't just fuel your body, reprogram it. Stay curious. I hope you found this fascinating.